Good morning, it's Thursday morning. We're sitting here in front of the Swift Current Inn at Many Glacier and we are getting ready to start our four night, five day backpacking trip. Today's an easy one. You just have to work with the, oh, there's a bee near my face. I lost, okay, oh, I think you whacked it, all right. Yeah, well you just have to work with the permits. You can't get the exact miles you want each day. So the first day is like nine miles and then the second day is also <laughs> nine miles. I think it's going to drive her nuts because she's used to hiking 30 miles a day lately and 10 miles is a good day hike for me. Uh, this will take at least six hours for me <laughs> with all the stops, but I think she wants to do it in three. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now we're going to slow, keep it slow and just enjoy and stop and enjoy our views because it's a beautiful, clear, sunny day. No sense in rushing it at all. So. And once we get, we, once we branch off from the iceberg and ptarmigan tunnel, I think there's gonna be a lot less people. So it'd be a lot more peaceful. Ready to go. Follow us after the intro to check out how this thing goes. All right, Tina's excited because we get to go explore this beautiful park. I'm excited because this is my first backpacking trip since the Arizona Trail. Since like, what was it? April 16th or so, 15th? haven't slept well I actually have slept in my tent quite a few nights just haven't carried it anywhere but we're off let's see how confusing I can make it for Tina and just keep making wrong turns see how long she'll let me wander off before she yells at me so we only have 10 points up miles so easy day easy day well. up straight ahead is Mount Wilbur you can still see there's snow on the very top I don't know if that's from yesterday morning. It could have been if it's cloudy all day. Maybe a good amount built up up there. Plus it's colder. But it's like a crown. We turn off onto the Ptarmigan Tunnel Junction there. And it's been pretty gradual up the whole time. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> Tina offered to carry my pack for me. Thought it'd be funny if she wore her pack and carried my pack on her front. Whew. Can you see all that snow up there? That's Mount Wilbur. Might be able to just make it out. There's a bunch, because I guess that's north side from a couple days ago. Wild. We are at a lake just before the pass, and as we got here, I realized one of the muffs for this microphone was off it. Um, I dropped it somewhere. This is my microphone that I put on my camera. It's a stereo microphone. That's why there are two cameras with two wind muffs. One fell off somewhere, and Tina went all the way back to the last time I remember seeing it, really. And I just went back and we didn't see it. We think, well, I think someone picked it up or a bird picked it up thinking it was some kind of rodent or something. I don't know. It looks really, if I was a bird, I would go after this little guy. Not too big. Looks plump, juicy. But it's funny that I carried this thing on the Arizona Trail, like almost 800 miles, didn't lose it. And then the first six miles of this, and then it's gone, first day. So I got to order a couple more for the future hikes coming up. There are so many bighorn sheep up here. They're all over. It's amazing how these little guys can just jump down these vertical rocks too. And we thought there was a lot here. There's some, some right across the trail, way up ahead. Pretty wild trail, right? You can see all the switchbacks. In fact, you can see the tunnel. I'll put an arrow at the tunnel from here. It's hard to identify unless you know it, but.
here. And right ahead is the Ptarmigan Tunnel. Look at that. Oh, they even have a gate, I guess, to enforce it. Wow, and there it is, straight to the other side. This trail is crazy. It goes all the way out in the open. You could so easily see that switchback. And then coming around is the other switchback, clear as day. And behind me, let's head into the tunnel. There was actually a, a worry maybe a few days ago that uh, this, this tunnel would be closed because of air activity between behind us actually towards Iceberg Lake, but it seems like any time I go anywhere where there's a bear warning or bear activity, I never see a bear. Oops, hello, sorry. Hello, who are you talking to? Myself. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like I should just go to places with no bear warnings, because maybe I'll see a bear then. And out the other side, let's see what the views are like. Oh my gosh, here's the trail. Big old wall. Straight ahead is Elizabeth Lake. We'll be camping right at the end there. But look, check out this tunnel behind us, all this rocks. It's just layers of really contrasting colors. And all different patterns too, it's not straight. Look at the different colors. There's the tunnel straight ahead. And towards the right, once you walk further, you see Ahern Glacier or Ahern Glacier or something like that. It's quite massive, but that is it. Fresh snow on the very top. A little bit. Clouds are coming in. Wasn't there before, but we don't have that far to go. There's our destination. We're just before the Elizabeth Four campground, but we've got this nice suspension bridge. Pocket Rocket's gonna test it out for me. Let's see how tightly she holds the sides. That she goes, oh. She's making good time. Good job, 
Good job. Now it's my turn. Oh, this one's not as bouncy. Not as bouncy as other ones. Not bad. Not too bad. So this is Lake Elizabeth Foot Campground. About, what was it, 10 to 11 miles from Mini Glacier. And of course, there's a lot of trash in the bear boxes that are here, but this is the eating area. Because of bear safety and glacier, you have to do, eat in the eating area and then put all your food here before you go back to your tent site. But of course, there's garbage. And of course, and this one's good. So we're gonna put our food here and then we're gonna go back to our campsite and set up the tent. It was a short day, but I'm kind of glad we're at camp. <laughs> I don't know how many miles we did looking for that microphone muff, but oh well, at least I got it back. Um, we met a couple of hikers that were right behind us. They picked it up on the way and they went up to the pass and we caught them on the way back. So worked out. I still have a working microphone. Maybe you can listen to some squirrels and stereo sound. Here we are at our campsite. There are five sites here. They're each capable of at least two two tents. This one like looks like you could squeeze three, but each permit you can have four people and two tents. So, I mean, it works out for us pretty well. We have plenty of space. The views up here, check that out. And we'll head down to the lake later. Hopefully the sunset's nice. It's beautiful. It's quiet. Look at more thimbleberries. Good morning. It's day two on our Glacier National Park backpacking trip. Look at that lake. Look at that steam just coming off the top. It was kind of a cold night, but overall it was alright. And look how beautiful it is. The sun's not going to crest the mountain there until 9 a.m. So we still got about 30 minutes right there in the left corner. It should come out. But for now it's shining on some of these higher peaks. Oh, as well as the big rock to our right here. Oop, I dropped my water bottle. It's beautiful. I was so busy looking at the steam that's coming off that didn't notice the reflection, how clear they are. The water is slightly ripply. Oh, because this dastardly bird on my left, causing the ripples. You can see on the left corner there, but the reflections are beautiful. What more could you ask for, you know? Packing up our stuff. Yeah, I mean, I want to take off my pants. <laughs> really? <laughs> take off your pants? <laughs> yeah, you got short time. This is my microphone with the wind muffs again, but I tied a piece of string around here. And that should hold it so it doesn't pop off. I like to use shock cord and hopefully the string doesn't wiggle too much when it's windy. Because if the wind makes it wiggle, then you'll hear every like shake of the string, but we'll see. That's my answer for the missing muff, and uh, we'll figure out something better once we get back to the car with more equipment.
just our first big opening for the whole day. Oh. Wow. We're at the Glens Lake Foot Campground. This is the first campground at Glens Lake. We're just gonna walk in there just to check out how everything looks. It looks like a few of the campsites are close to the water, but the eating area is far away from the water. Let's go check it out. Here's the eating area, same as usual, and this one has bare pole system. Here, most of them have these poles and you just throw a rope up and there's a little tie off on the bottom. Good morning. We are at Mokawani Junction Campground. There's our food bag, food bag hanging poles. Here at Glacier National Park, they just have these metal poles and you throw your rope over it and then tie it to a tree. I guess now the bears here have figured out how to rip off the ropes from the trees. But we're all packed up, ready to go. Here's a dining area, dining area, and our packs. This pack is looking really flat because Tina is carrying my tent because, you know, she's a little stronger than I am. So, um, because the food bag's getting emptier, this is just getting sunken in every day. This pack is way too big for what we have. <laughs> I wish I had something, maybe I'll tighten these up a lot more, but, uh, I'm kind of worried it might fly off here. Today we are going over Stony Pass and it should be good views. Then we're heading up to Waterton Lake campground and then we're actually gonna head up to the Waterton Canadian border there so Tina could touch the CDT monument that's there and then we're gonna head back to the Waterton camp stay there for tonight so that should be a good day it's gonna be about 20 miles so we're gonna get going pretty early which is like 8 o'clock which is not really early <laughs> but early enough when you're walking between these tall mountains even when the sun rises at like 6.56, the sun actually comes out at around 9. But it's actually pretty good though because it's bright enough to hike, but not hot yet. And if you're lucky too, you get little slivers of sun just hitting the sides of mountains. It's pretty amazing just walking along here. But right now we're basically walking up this channel. We're going to hit a pass, which basically is just an area in between all these mountains. Here's another one over here. And we're actually gonna go around and head northwest to the pass itself, but we should have pretty good views for quite a while. Still heading up and just beautiful series of waterfalls up ahead. And right up, you know, there's a lake up there. Just beautiful open area. And we still haven't hit the, hit the pass area.
here we are at Stony Indian Pass. It's not the BAM wild type of passes that some passes are. It looks like it could be pretty nice. Let's check out this view. This is the trail down. Wow, yeah, look at the valley down there. Lots of trees though. But that is the way down. Oh, look at that lake. Man, when the sun hits them, it's just they just glow such a beautiful green. In fact, this whole area is just super green. It's amazing, actually. Currently, there are huge patches of red, like down there. Fall is quickly coming upon us. Here's Pocket Rocket at the rest site. Wow, beautiful views from this one of the lake. Holy cow. Look at that. Yeah. I still have a tuna too, and I have a big bag of bars. Coming down from a pass, it's been rather bushy, and unfortunately, I, I lost one of my water bottles, an empty one. I think in a whole PCT and the Arizona Trail, I never lost the water bottle. And here, I'm losing all kinds of things. This is only day three. Now the problem is the pocket that holds the water bottle is kind of loose. So the water bottle in there, and I put a tripod in there, they're all flapping around. So I have to keep checking, make sure they're still there. Otherwise I could just drop out again. <sighs> it's like rookie backpacker incidents that haven't happened to me. The bridge heading towards Waterton Monument is pretty big. This is the longest suspension bridge yet that I've been on. <laughs> Trekking poles are snagged. We are coming to the Northern Monument and uh, oh, it's way over there. There's someone there. Someone? At the base. But they have this rope here. I did hear before that the monument was in the Canadian side. So Google Maps says it's about 30 feet over, so it might be there. But we always, I've always heard before we even started that the actual monument was on the Canadian side. So we're not going to get past this string because it's there for a reason. I don't think they put it up like way before the boundary. There's a pier right here and there's a clear cut actually. That's the border itself. We have no clear cut here at all. No clear indication. You think there'd be more signs. They're all facing towards Canada. We got a black bear in front of us. He's just kind of on the trail, but he's not moving. He's right in front of us there. He's just standing there. Hey! He's a big one. Yep. Hey! Moving up a little bit. There? there. You see him? There is the sun. Oh, yeah, he's walking there. How far away is he? Uh, behind the aspen tree. Oh. Probably 30 meters. Well, he's well off to the side. That's good. Want to get in front? Thank you, bear. Yeah, perfect, bear. That was great. We went right to the side so we can keep going. Here's a fresh bear poop on the trail that we did not see there before because that's super fresh. There are flies flying around, red berries. That was our friend. Good morning from Waterton campsite. This is actually one of the few backcountry campsites you can have a fire. There's a fire ring right here in the food eating area. There's the bear poles. Yesterday was pretty cool. We went up to the monument and came back. But today, we're heading back towards Many Glacier Campground now. But we're going to stay at 50 Mountain. That's about 12 miles and like 20 something hundred, 2800 feet of climb. The elevation profile is pretty funny. It's 
super gradual and then all of a sudden it just straight all of it is just non-stop up so that's gonna be quite a fun walk but i think it's gonna be beautiful views again it's actually the first morning where it's been kind of cloudy but uh i think it's gonna be really nice so we're all packed up and ready to go <laughs> we're near the goat haunt shelters now the trail goes right by there and this place is closed because of covid and it, it's pretty wild there's a couple of big buildings there's one over there there's even a basketball hoop but they're all shuttered and locked up normally you could stay here and look at this the solar panel is vertical because of where we are I guess at some point vertical is better than horizontal. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, normally you can actually get campsite permits here and stay in the shelters, but all shut down. And we keep saying it's like a ghost town with how tall these plants are. You could totally film like a zombie movie here. And it's plausible. And Tina and I were the lone survivors. And we're going to constantly do dumb things. That would have gotten us killed a long time ago, but not. Look at this building. It's like a lodge. It's huge. It's crazy. And then over here, more buildings. Boat dock. Oh, the ranger station. Tina, don't make too much noise. We don't want zombies coming this way. Because I think that's what's going on. The apocalypse, there's nobody anywhere around. Deserted buildings. Oh my god, that house has antlers on the door. Okay, let's go this way. These rocks are wild. There's like swirlies or circles everywhere. How's that possible? They're everywhere. And when you look up, it's just swirly, swirly like crazy. They look definitely like lava created. Weird, huh? Super swirly.
Here's 50 Mountain Campgrounds Privy. It's a toilet with no walls and no ceiling. Another one of these guys. This is our view from the 50 Mountain Campground eating area. It rained quite a bit this morning, but it stopped. Looks beautiful though. These trees are not the way everything else is, but there's one bear box. There's one bear box by the horse hitch campsite up there. By the way, 50 Mountains Privy does not have walls and it's about there and you could see each other. You could wave. Another site up there and there are three more sites out there scattered. And there's actually another site way down, way down somewhere. We didn't really find it. And now we're packing up for our last day. Big 20 miler. Most elevation gain of the week, but we're ready. She's ready. I'm not ready.
this is both our first rams in the wild. Holy cow. I've seen one, kind of, but I wasn't sure if it's like a protected area, but this is just right off to the side.